and then divide by two, what happens? Here's one. There's this. There's the first one. You're asking me to add it, <laughs> add it to the other one, right? And then what was the other thing you asked me to do? Divide by two. So I'm going to take that thing, and then once I get something out of it, I'm going to divide by two. Okay. So let's just see what happens. What would you like me to do next? What what piece of working could I do on this? I really hope we can simplify this. Can someone give me a suggestion for how we can simplify it? Okay, I've got an answer, but I want to know how to simplify it. Right? I want to know how to get there. Okay? I've got two fractions. What's your normal impulse, your normal instinct when you've got two fractions? What do you do? You could, you could cross multiply to get a common denominator, right? Except we already have a common denominator, so we can just add them together, right? So I'm going to get minus 5 minus 3 root 5 plus minus 5 plus 3 root 5 all over 2, right? Common denominator. And don't forget that whole thing is being divided by 2, okay? That looks good to me so far. Uh, we've got all these gross surds hanging around, right? Did you notice them? There's two. What happens to them? They exactly cancel out. Do you think that's a coincidence? Like they just happen to cancel out? Yes. It's the quadratic. Should I make them vote? Rastin, you said it's a quadratic. It's a quadratic equation uh, uh, here. We had another word for this, right? What did we actually use? The formula. It's got a plus and a minus in it, right? It will always have a plus or minus in it. You'll always have the third bit is plus and minus, so they just cancel out. Did you notice that? So, what do I get here? Minus 5, minus 5. What's that? Minus 5, minus 5. It's minus 10. You've just told me those third parts will just cancel each other out. That's divided by 2, and then you divide by 2. Minus five, minus 5 on 2, as we heard before. Okay, so where is that? That's negative 2.5, right? Where does that look like? Do you think, are you happy with where I've positioned it, roughly? Yes. Right? And it's nice. It's like, oh, look, that doesn't have any third bits. I can write that pretty easily on. Okay? Now, what you've just worked out is where the axis of symmetry is. Shambhava, do you have a question? Can't you do minus B over 2A for the second? Ah. So... Shemar, can you say that one more time, but louder so everyone can hear? Um, minus b over 2a. Can't we just do x equals, you said x equals, didn't you? Minus b over 2a. Uh, think about this for a second. Hold on, hold on. Let's just, we have a hypothesis here. Let's just see if it works out. Um, a and b. What are a and b in this uh, question? There's, uh, whoops, sorry. There's a right there. It's a 1. And then here is B, it's 5, right? So if I put that into here, I would say X equals minus one by five, five, five oh, over two. two lots of one, which is of course this. Now hold on a minute, hold on a minute. How did, how did this such so ultra simple thing come out of this like mind-boggling disaster? Can someone tell me where? Say that again, but louder so everyone can hear. It came from this plus or minus square root of, right? You told me to find an average, you should add the two things together, divide by two, right? But if you add something together, one of which has a plus and one of which has a minus, they will always, every time, cancel each other out, right? The plus and the minus will always cancel each other out. You know how you talked about the how much the x to the power of three the equivalent to that. We took the really scenic route, didn't we? God. Right? So, in fact, we can go directly here because this gross part here, the plus or minus, it will always, every time, cancel out. Is that okay? In fact, what you're really doing is minus b on 2a plus minus b on 2a, and then you divide it by 2, which takes you exactly here. Okay? Which is why I've artfully left this little gap here, right? The axis of symmetry. If you want, you can take the scenic route. Or now that we know why, and that was really important. I didn't just want to land you on an equation. Here you go. Right? And then it just mysteriously just kind of like it's there. Right? It comes from somewhere. It came from you taking these two things out of the quadratic formula and then taking the average. Right? And that's what you end up with. One last question. Why is it x equals? Why not say y equals? 
The axis of symmetry, what kind of, I've drawn it on, what kind of line is it? Which direction is it facing? Vertical. It's vertical, right? All vertical lines are in the form x equals, x equals 0, x equals 5. In this case, what? x equals? Minus 2.5. In fact, I'd go so far as to encourage you to write that onto the line itself. Right? It has an equation. You can label it just like everything else that um, is going to be on there. Right? Okay, we have our axis of symmetry. That's going to lead to the vertex of the turning point. I've really, um, I've pushed your brain a lot and asked you a lot of questions. So at this point, I'm just going to show you how we get it. Okay, the vertex, the turning point, right? You're going to take your x value out of this. In this case, it's negative two and a half, right? And you're going to say, substitute that, that x value, right? Substitute, oops, wrong color, sorry. We're going to substitute into the original equation, the equation we started with. Right? So substitute right, the axis of symmetry, whatever it happens to be, into the original equation. Now at this point I'm going to encourage you to reach for your calculator because I'm sure you probably could work out what negative 2.5 squared is and then to add it to 5 lots of that, etc. But this is just sort of machinery, right? Get the machine to do it. Okay, so has someone already worked out when they put it in? What'd you get? Negative 11. Now, this is really interesting, right? Negative 11. What do you think of my graph now? Does that look like negative 11 to you? Negative, negative 11.25. Thank you. So in this case, y equals, y equals. Okay. So I'm going to pair this together with the x-coordinate to make a point. A point has two coordinates, right? So the turning point in this case, in this particular example, is what was the x-coordinate? It was from the axis of symmetry. What's the x-coordinate? Did anyone tell you to pack up? Thank you, negative 2.5. And, and we just worked out the y-coordinate, negative 11.5. Now, oh, sorry, a quarter. Uh, what do you think of my graph now? Very different. Very different, because this guy here, where should it be? On the other side, on the left. Oh, it, it is on the left. It's on the left. Hmm. It needs to go down, doesn't it? See how that's negative 5? That's negative 5, right? I'm saying that's negative 5. Negative 11 and a quarter is like twice, more than twice as far away, right? So in fact, my real graph should go much steeper. Do you agree with that? Do you see why, don't move, do you see why it was useful to get every piece of information before we actually started drawing because now I've got to rub out my drawing and start again. Does that make sense? Yeah.